Hello and welcome to episode 130 of my podcast all about knitting and crochet and my yarn shop here in Wiesbaden, Germany. I'm Kiko and today is February 14th, 2022. Today I picked my clothes um, for their special buttons. <laughs> so long time viewers of my podcast will know um, this loop. It's the um, Tubularity by Martina Behm. It's one of her... Um, it's not quite such a crazy design. It's a fairly normal um, cowl, but it has three. You can knit it, you're supposed to knit it with three buttons and one buttonhole. So the buttonhole is down here. Right now I'm just um, put the whole thing, put my head through the whole thing <laughs> and bunched it up around my neck like this. And at the moment, two of the buttons are showing. The third one is hidden somewhere here. So depending on what I'm wearing and what I want to show, I can play around with the placement. And uh, also I could pull this um, tip through and button it down like this or like that. That's a possibility if you want it a bit snugger um, like this. But I quite like to show this end like somewhere. What I can also do is I can pull it down like this and I can button it down. <laughs> On, on my jacket. I think that looks quite funny too and it will make sure that it stays here. Yeah, so the buttons on the cowl were made by my sister. They're ceramic buttons that she um, made and she used for this she used a stamp with the hats. I don't quite, maybe she has a stamp for that too and this one has a star and then she put the glaze on and she burnt them again and um, originally I had three different buttons that she gave to me, but I misplaced them and I still haven't found them. I was pretty sure I would find them the moment I sewed these on, but um, they haven't appeared yet, so no idea where they are. Yeah, so this is a fairly long cowl. And the thing is that um, instead of pulling it over your head, what you can also do is... Um, just put it around your, your shoulders like this. Then it's a lot easier to put on and take off. And you can wear it loosely like this. I could use the button, one of the buttons and the buttonhole to um, hold it in place like this. Um, what's also possible is to put one end into the other end and then button it tight uh, so that it stays put like that. It is actually a way that I like wearing it because it makes it quite stable and quite um, quite warm um, like that because it's not only double thickness because it was knit in the round but by pushing it into itself it sort of has four times <laughs> the thickness and then um, yeah it's 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 a becomes another tube like that which is something I like. And you can play around with the colors that you show. So today with my gray gray and black jacket, it doesn't really matter which side I show, but I like to show this bit that has the black in it as well. So um, yeah, that's the Tubularity by Martina Beam. I used several colors, hand dyed colors by Voldacke, and also um, three colors were dyed by um, Drachenwolle and it looks a bit like um, I combined some black with this color because this color seems to be running through but it was actually two different colorways so it was this colorway with the blue and the white and it was this colorway with the same white and blue but also with some black in the color in the skein and then this was a colorway and these colorways were all by Voldacke they were minis in my advent calendar and I had two of the of this color and of this color, but only had one of this and this color. So that's the cowl. And the jacket I'm wearing is the is Elizabeth Zimmerman's um, adult surprise jacket. So it's knitted the same way the baby surprise jacket is knitted. Uh, I use the Rigato, which is um, a wool blend by Wollrödel. And um, I did not lengthen the sleeves. So if you knit it with the original instructions, um, the sleeve length is um, depends on the sleeve width. So 
they sort of go together. And for, for a baby which has shorter arms compared to the body, even for, the, for them it's usually not a full length sleeve. Um, and for the adult version, so what you're supposed to do is pick up stitches and knit down. And I just didn't want to do that. I wanted a short sleeved jacket and um, yeah, really like it. I've worn it a lot. As you can see, um, it's a very soft yarn, so it tends to pull quite a lot, but I don't mind. I mostly wear it at home, but I will wear it to work, to work every now and then. And um, yeah, it's nice and warm. And the buttons, yeah, the buttons I bought as a yarn. It wasn't a yarn festival. I, I think it was sort of like a creative market kind of thing years ago. And there was this um, booth that had a stone. So these are real stones that they used and they drilled holes into. So that's the reason they're all different sizes and different forms, but the natural stones. And I really, really like that. And um, they are quite heavy for the yarn, but it works. Um, if I wear the jacket open, it will flop over a bit like this. But so far it hasn't damaged the yarn. And especially if I wear it closed, it's, um, it's quite okay with the two layers holding the button. That's okay. Yeah, so that's what I'm wearing today. Um, just put this around my shoulder like that quickly showing most of the colors except for the ones in the back so yeah i like to wear it like this as well um yeah then on to finished objects i have two finished objects today um the first one is one that you've seen before it's the dishcloth that i started crocheting the week before and then last week i finished it and uh, last week i'd forgotten to write down to write down um, what this technique is called and it's either called interlocking crochet or it's called locked filet mesh so I think filet mesh is the word for the um, what each single color does by itself it's like a filet mesh and then if you crochet that by itself you can either fill the holes or you can leave them open and you can create patterns like that but this way you have two of those meshes that are interlock together which is why it's called interlocking crochet and the designer is called Ashley Brotzel not quite sure how to pronounce that and I think all of her patterns um, you can either use the interlocking crochet method or you can um, do the mosaic crochet which has a bit of a different look but it sort of creates the same pattern which is quite amazing Someday I will try the other method just to compare what one looks like and what the other looks like. Yeah, and as I said, um, I tried to read the chart. I failed miserably. <laughs> so I stopped following the chart when I was about here. And then I just played around. So for a few rows, I um, went for a very... Um, what's it called? Um, like organized way of doing one front, one back, something like that, or two front, two back. Uh, but then I started mixing things up. And so this half of the cloth is just a fantasy pattern. So I just went front and back any way I felt on both sides with both colors. So this is not a nothing. <laughs> uh, it's not supposed to, to be anything. It's just me practicing the crochet, going front and going back wherever I liked. And uh, when I decided it was big enough, I uh, crocheted single crochets all around. And at first I had planned to um, crochet hangers in the corners. But then I realized because of this mesh uh, nature of, of, of this crochet, there are already holes, not only in the corners, but basically everywhere. So I didn't crochet any special hangers and I know I can just use those holes to hang my dishcloth when I've used it. And I feel that with this um, kind of structure, I'm pretty sure this is a, going to be a really good dishcloth. <laughs> and because it's not so tight, I think it's probably easy to wring out the water. And I really, really like it. Can't wait to start using it. And I may crochet more of these just because I really enjoyed um, 
not only enjoyed the crocheting, the making of this, but I just love the finished project. Um, on my project page for my dishcloths, I've now added her pattern that I started using. Um, the pattern is written for 40 of those um, squares. So it makes a, I think it was 20 inches by 20 inches big square if you do the whole pattern. I only followed like half the stitches and I was, I was trying to do half the rows, but um, as I said, I stopped following the pattern, but I really like that pattern. So I might try and come up uh, with something that I can use a 20 by 20 inches square. And then maybe I'll do the whole thing because it looks really beautiful. Yeah, so that's the first finished object for today. It's a dishcloth. And the second finished object is my February gnome. And you haven't seen him before because as with the January gnome, I started one day and I finished it the next. <laughs> and it's another gnome out of the Never Not Gnoming pattern, that first pattern that Sarah Shearer published. And this if I remember correctly, it's Norbert and the January gnome was Natasha. So I'm, I'm only missing the little one out of that pattern. And I used the same yarn for both of these gnomes. So you can see what the size difference is supposed to be. I used um, leftover alpaca silk yarn by Hansa Farm. As I said with the first one, it's... Um, it's quite a luxurious yarn to be using for gnomes. But why shouldn't the gnomes be soft and, and beautiful <laughs> and shiny? And I'm using leftover yarn because I knit different things with those yarns before. So, um, yeah, I really, really love my February gnome. And now the January gnome has a, has a little, or has a big mate, has a big brother to look after him. And, uh, yeah, so that's the second finished object for today. Okay, then on to works in progress. As usual, I start with the socks. I am knitting the Hong Kong socks by Mina Philip out of her ebook Around the World in Eight Socks using Opal sock yarn, their subscription, the Abu yarn. I'm taking part in the pattern battle, the Mustachlacht. And um, this is the second sock. I finished knitting the leg and I have not finished the heel. So I'm um, maybe three quarter through knitting the heel. It's a fish lips kiss heel. It's not in the pattern. It's just my favorite heel. So I tend to add that. I'm going to donate the sock for women with ovarian cancer. Um, there's a German organization who collect green socks to give to women um, together with information and um, yeah, offerings of help in their situation. So that's what I'm knitting those socks for. <coughs> Sorry, I have a bit of a sore throat today. The second pair or the second sock I have on my needles is this beautiful pattern 20 days socks by Emma Potter, who gave that pattern to me for free. And um, I am combining the alpaca sock yarn by Hansa Farm together with opal sock yarn. And last week I showed you the five different leftover skeins that I had from their beautiful yarns. But the fun thing or the what happened is that it kind of looks as if I used one colorful ball of yarn by opal. And even though last week I was still hoping to finish the whole sock, using those five um, different skeins, I not only got a bit tired of cutting the yarn all the time, as I said last week, it's not too bad because I weave them in as I go, so it's not such a big problem. But the other problem is that with the five leftover yarns and my main color, this was a project that I had to carry around six balls of yarn. And socks tend to be something that I like to knit on the go, that I like to carry with me. And I decided it's just too much hassle, as you can't see the difference. If I had a lot of distinct colors and maybe hand dyed yarns, I would decide, okay, this is something I only knit in the shop or only knit at home. And then it's worth the effort. But because the sock looks as if I was using one ball of colorful yarn I decided I'll stop after the leg so I knit the heel 
and then switch to knitting just this one skein. So that was what I had planned to do for the second sock. Now for the second sock, I'm thinking of using the other very colorful leftover yarn that I used up here, combined with one of the greens, because that uh, ball doesn't have any green in it. I'll show you uh, when I start the second sock. But for this sock, I decided I'm going to stick with this ball of yarn. So as you can see down here, the colors have changed a little bit um, because there hasn't been any red for a while. But I just started knitting the yellow and the red is coming up. So yeah, it's a lot easier now with the just with the two balls of yarn, main color and contrast color. And um, yeah, so I hope to get on with that sock fairly quickly. Now um, that I've started the foot, you can see I'm knitting sort of simple stripes down here, but on the top of the foot, I'm continuing the slip stitch pattern that um, Emma came up with. And I really, really like the pattern. Yeah, and then last week I told you I wanted to cast on a pair of socks for my sister. I wanted to knit a pair of socks just out of the um, alpaca yarn, sock yarn, and I wanted to knit one of the um, Sock Madness warm-up patterns from last year because the warm-up pattern for this year was just a bit too much work for right now. <laughs> Maybe I'll knit that some other time. But I started that shorty sock. The pattern is called Pink Lemonade. It's a free pattern, so go ahead and download it from Ravelry and I'm calling my project Grey Lemonade <laughs> because my sister wanted grey socks and this is what the pattern looks like. Just a fairly simple lace detail that runs down one side of the sock and then the other sock will get the pattern on the other side of the sock. Um, yep, I knit the heel as it's written in the pattern because for shorty socks I kind of like the slightly bigger heel that this heel um, gives. Yep, and I'm really happy with it. It's very soft. And I wanted to use this opportunity to show you the other colors that this yarn comes in. Um, I ordered yarn from Hansa Farm some time ago, and because I ordered different um, qualities, I thought if I show them all on the video, the video will just get too long. So I decided I'll show the colors whenever I use them. So last week I showed the brushed alpaca. Today I'll show you the alpaca sock yarn and then the other yarns I'll show whenever I use them. But the problem with that is um, one color already sold out. <laughs> so one color I can't show you. I've already shown you the black and the light or the middle gray. I forgot to order the light gray. I'll do that next time. And this is the darkest gray. Um, and then there's the off-white and a beige color. Um, I think they're very good for contrast colors if you want to knit color work. There's a beautiful green. And then there's this dark blue. And the color that sold out was a um, blue, green, gray mix. It's like a, yeah, it's a lighter um, shade of blue, but with a bit of like green and gray mix into it. I'm going to reorder that as well. So. When I get that again, I can show you. And I hope that Hansa Farm will make more colors in the future because these are all the colors that they have that they offer at the moment. And as you know, I love colorful socks. So I hope they will come up with more colors for their um, alpaca sock yarn. Okay, that's that for socks for this week. Then the next project I want to show you is my Quadra Kaul, another a uh, cow pattern by Martina Beam. This is a really crazy design um, with some crazy knitting maneuvers, but most of the knitting is really, really easy. I started off with this opal yarn and then changed to this beautiful um, Voldaku rainbow color yarn. And right now, this is one of the ways I can, I can show you the, the cowl, which sort of makes it really obvious one way you can uh, wear this. So if I wear this cowl like this, this is the main color that you can see. You can see a bit of the other color peeking through. And when I turn it round, this would be the main color that shows and you would just see a little bit of that color. You can see that I continued knitting um, 
with the colors mixing up. And then last week I showed you this kind of rainbow and then here's the, the next rainbow that appeared and how I'm waiting for the next to happen. So it's really exciting to knit on this. And um, yeah, and then I, you can, once it's finished, you can sort of pull things around and change the look up, which I think is one of the uh, most fascinating things about this design is the many different looks you can create. Like if worn like this, only this color will show in the front, but in the back, all the two colors will sort of meet and you can see um, I think you can see as much of both colors. How do you say that properly? I don't know. But both colors show. Um, yeah. Quadra Carol by Martina Behm. Very, very interesting design. Easy to knit. Fantastic to show off two different colors. So that's that. Then we come to all the sweaters and stuff I am knitting. I start with the rainbow cardi again. Um, the good news is it's easy to show because there's no yarn hanging off it, which means I finished the first skein of yarn. Yay! This is the Merino sock yarn by Hansa Farm. So the, the other one is the Alpaca sock yarn. This is the Merino sock yarn. It's beautifully soft and um, yeah, you can't see a lot. You can see that I finished the skein, so I uh, got down to my waist with the first skein of yarn, which is quite amazing. I haven't started knitting the um, sleeve because I made a mental mistake. Um, I thought I couldn't start knitting the sleeve because the needle I wanted to use was in my um, Raglano pullover. And it's only last night that I realized that for this jacket, I'm using a four millimeter needle, but with the Raglano, I'm using the 4.5 millimeter needle. So I could have started the sleeve already because the four millimeter needle was in my Zachary remix socks and I finished those like two weeks ago yeah but that's when you don't think properly so this week I can start knitting the first sleeve and then we'll see how that goes along so that was that and then the next pullover I'll show you the raglano that's that one so this is and this is not a four ply sock yarn like the rainbow jacket this is a six ply sock yarn or dk weight or whatever you call it and that was the first 150 grams so that's a difference uh, if you use thicker yarn and then started the second um, ball of yarn for the sleeves this is the first sleeve i did quite a bit of knitting on the second sleeve i um, just got to the point where i started the decreases um, There they are. There are. There's the first decrease. You can see that instead of a knit two, I have a knit one at the moment. So I can do all the decreases. And then after the decreases, it's only a little bit of straight knitting. And um, this is what I have left of my second ball of yarn. Not too much left. It's one of their rainforest colors. And the colors were inspired by this beautiful butterfly. So all the rainforest colors are inspired by animals. Um, which is sometimes very funny, sometimes very interesting. And, um, and buying the yarn helps save the rainforest. So that's a good thing. So that's that. Then the third one is my Noro Papus pullover. And I like to show off the ball of yarn with this one. Last week, I think that it was grays and browns and beige things colors like that and now i'm back to the beautiful red color um, with some black and a bit of gray peeking through and this is what the pullover itself looks like at the moment so sleeves are done and here you can see that was the brown and gray and beige colors that i was that the um ball of yarn was showing last time and down here is this um like dark green color, I think it shows. And um, yeah, so the next stripe is going to be red, which I'm looking forward to a lot. And then I can see if this, I think the stripes are getting a bit wider, but not too much because I'm knitting the front and the back and they're rather wide. 
Um, and one of the things I really enjoy is that when I knit the red yarn, the needles and the yarn go together really nicely. So it's just some added fun while knitting this beautiful pullover. I still have no idea if, um, how long the pullover, pullover would get if I knitted the whole yarn. Um, it's still way too short to think about finishing, about stopping. So I'll keep knitting so many rows and then rounds and then try it on and so on. And then maybe next week I know a bit more about how long I want this thing to be. So that's that. And then the mealy vest that I started uh, the week before. I showed you the top part of the back of the little vest. I'm using the Opal Sock Yarn Held Double with the Brushed Alpaca by Hansa Farm. And I'm really, really happy with how this is coming along and how the yarns look together and especially feel together. Because the sock yarn gives it a bit of um, a body, so to say, but because of the brush alpaca, it's so soft. So I finished the upper back I was talking about last week. Then I picked up stitches on the shoulder and knit the front down. And then I picked up stitches from the other shoulder and knit the front down. And when I finished both front pieces, I put all the stitches together and knit down. And I have two armholes, I have two fronts and a bit of a back. So this is what the neckline looks like. And um, yeah, as I just showed you, this is what I have left from the brushed alpaca from my first ball of yarn. And right now I'm thinking that maybe if I get low enough with the rest of that yarn, I will um, go straight into the ribbing as soon as the yarn's gone. Because I wanted to knit all the ribbing bits, so the, the collar, the button bands, the armhole ribbing, and the lower ribbing, I wanted to use the black um, brushed alpaca combined with the same opal yarn just to see uh, what a difference it makes if you switch out the color from the brushed alpaca and um, I'm not quite down to my waistline yet but if I get down to my waist with the leftover of that yarn then I will switch to the black if it's higher than that I think it's too early to go down to the ribbing and I might add a longer ribbing than the pattern calls for so that the vest is long enough for how I like it and um, yeah, we'll see how that goes. If it's if it, if I don't get deep enough with that one ball, then I will use another light grey um, alpaca ball of yarn, <laughs> uh, and then maybe I will do part of the the collar um, in the light grey. But I don't know yet. We'll see. I hope to show you next week. So that's that. Then. I showed you my crochet project last week, um, the Arietes Square. It's a free pattern on Ravelry and I crocheted those three squares. I want to um, knit them together with the dark and light, um, yeah, like that. <laughs> and um, I started the next squares, but instead of going one square, another square, the way I did with the first three, I decided to sort of streamline the process a little bit and I crocheted five middle bits last night and um, added the second round. So I did three dark ones because I have one dark square. So together with these three new ones, I have four. And because I already have two finished light ones, I did two light middles. And then I did the second round of the pattern and the good thing about this is I can remember the pattern for one round by uh, I can remember it by heart and then I can knit all the other pieces without having to look at the pattern but if I do the whole square I have to keep looking at the pattern and by the time I finish I can't remember the beginning and so I thought if I do five at a time I only have to look into the pattern for for every round once and then I can crochet it five times so this is what they look like with just two colors and then the funny thing is because I have five colors the third color is the same for both of these 
So I have the darkest and the second darkest here and the lightest and the second lightest here. But color number three is the same for both squares. So um, I'm crocheting round number three um, with the same color for all five squares. And I think it's so interesting the way this looks. Yeah, so I have to crochet round three for all for all of them and then yeah I'll finish those and then I can start maybe I can start sewing a few of them together and then see exactly how many I need for my little stovetop in the kitchen and there's one more um, crochet pro project I want to show you I didn't actually start it last week but I um, keep forgetting to uh, to do a rivalry project for this because this is again something I'm crocheting with the kids in um, at the school where I teach and I'm using this book uh, crochet mandalas and um, I've used it before and I'm just crocheting this to show the kids what you can do and they can crochet out of the book if they want to um, and so I just started crocheting that for fun to keep me busy while they are working on their projects and just to be able to show them how you can um, yeah, what these what these projects look like in real life and also uh, what the difference is if you choose different colors so this is the pattern I'm working from and these are the colors that I chose mainly because they were colors I had with me I'm not carrying around all the colors I have here <laughs> so I had a limited palette to choose from and I quite like the way these colors look and for the the last, I think there are three more rounds to come. I um, plan to repeat the colors that I have here. So um, I think this should look nice. So that's the mandala I'm crocheting. That brings me to the memory blanket. I forgot to show you last week. Last week I had three squares that I had added to the blanket. These are the three squares that I wanted to show last week. Those two are from a pair of socks where I got the yarn as a present and I knitted socks that are sort of, is it mirror image? I don't know, but whenever one sock had white, the other had blue and the other way around because I knit them two at a time. And this is a Opal Hundertwasser color. It's one of their colorways that are inspired by one of Hundertwasser's um, art works. And I knit my square shrug out of that yarn. And also I had woven in all the ends except for the ones at the edge where I'm still attaching squares but the other ends have all been woven in I'm very happy about that and also I added two more squares last week so I can show you these today the red I haven't woven in those yarns and yarn ends yet but they are new so that's okay <laughs> The red yarn um, is a Filda sock yarn. That's a brand that I used to sell in my shop. I'm not doing any more, but I'm still using up the yarn that I have. And I knit a pair of socks with a pattern that I had thought of writing down and publishing. But then Mina Philip designed her Paris socks that use the almost exact same pattern um, stitch. So I'm not going going to write down this pattern. But um, yeah, I finished knitting the socks, so I put in a square in my blanket. And this is an Opal yarn that was, um, it was part of the subscription. And then later it was one of the shaft part uh, colors. It's one of those colors that um, support German, or the work with German sheep in Southern Germany. And I knit, I test knit, a pair of slippers um, yeah you'll find that in my projects if you're interested that's what I did with that color yeah so blanket is growing and this time I didn't forget to show you <laughs> and that brings me to our knit along the last project that I show and um, I knit on that when while we went for a walk yesterday evening uh, yesterday afternoon it was a beautiful day yesterday and um, so it's slowly, slowly growing. And again, I weighed my yarn and I'm down to, what was it? I think it was 27 grams last week and I think it's 24 grams today. So again, I only managed to knit three grams, 
But it means I finally um, got over the halfway point. So this is less than half the yarn um, that it was when I started. And so I've knit more than half the yarn <laughs> in, the, in this skein. So uh, yeah, quite happy about that. And maybe this week I can try and manage to knit more than three grams. Maybe I can go to five grams or something. <laughs> yeah, I'm really looking forward to having this and wearing this now. But I also still enjoy the knitting. Yeah, that was everything I knit and crocheted last week. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one.